Good morning, everybody. Um, once you see the title of this uh, video, health and God, faith, those kind of things, um, it's kind of heavy, kind of heavy sometimes. But I felt that the Lord has put this on my heart to come forward and just tell you a story that's happened to me over the last couple of years. So, and, and I got to tell you, it's <clears throat> four o'clock in the morning on Saturday, uh, July, I'm sorry, September 23rd, 2023. Um, but let me take you back a couple years. Um, it was July 21st, 2021. Uh, I woke up in the most excruciating pain I'd ever been in in my life. Uh, I knew I was dying. I didn't know um, what was wrong. I <laughs> I didn't want to wake my wife up. It was about this time of the morning, maybe an hour earlier, about 3 a.m. I guess. <clears throat> so I went out from our bedroom. I was able to walk, but it was a back pain. Um, and it was a, I don't even know how to describe it. It was an excruciating pain that vibrated in all locations. You, you couldn't just say, oh, I, uh, oh, my finger hurt. It was what, what I thought was possibly a heart attack. Um, I didn't know. I, I had, I had no idea. Um, but instead of, you know, um, I'm kind of a stubborn person, so instead of waking my wife up, I, I didn't want to bother her. So I went out to our, um, I had a chair in a dining room area, um, kind of a family room area that I went and sat by. And I, I tried, you couldn't get comfortable. There was no comfort level. Uh, the pain didn't stop. And I sat in this chair for a little while and then you know and you're moving at all times you can't get comfortable I did that for about an hour hour and a half I was able to breathe but the pain was poof. so I then felt like I was gonna throw up so we had a bathroom I, I went to the into the bathroom I can't recall now if I did. I think I threw up. Um, and the pain continued to radiate through my body. Uh, it just <clears throat> started in my back, went down my back, up my back, into my chest. It was excruciating. So after a couple of hours of laying on the floor in front of the toilet, it was probably 6 a.m., 6.30 a.m., uh, and I was, of course, sweating profusely and then not. And I, I tried to sleep because I'd been up. So I, um, I didn't know what to do. You know, you're still in that stage where you don't want to bother your spouse, but you think, well, do I want her to wake up and find me dead laying in front of the toilet? You know, let's be honest. So it was probably 7 a.m. I made way, my way back to the bedroom um, between 7, 7.30 a.m., I think. And I, I woke her up and I said, I, and she knows I don't complain. I hate to bother her. I don't want to, I don't want to be a bother or a burden to anybody. But this whole time, I tell you this, I, I was, I was praying to God that whatever Whatever happens, you know, it, it brings things home. Your family, you know, what is important to you? What is going on? You don't, you, you have no idea. So I finally thought I, I need help and I need to help. I need help now. So I went, made it to my wife in the bedroom, woke her up. Um, somehow I had not made enough noise to wake her up. I mean, our, our family room was a long ways away where I was trying to, huddle on the floor in the fetal position under the toilet. So woke her up. It was probably about 7.30 in the morning. Um, 
I got dressed. She immediately took me to the emergency room. And I had a, I, of course I took a bowl with me on the way because I felt, felt nauseous at all times, just every moment. So we take that. I didn't throw up on the way, but of course we bounced our way all the way into Pekin on the roads. Um, and we went to the emergency room at the local hospital. And about the time she pulled up in front of the hospital, my pain started to dissipate. And I went from thinking I'm going to die to, I don't, I don't know, something, the pain is, is starting to go away. Well, my wife is a very stubborn person because I said, well, let's go back home. And she's like, no, it's now 8 o'clock in the morning. We're here. You're going to the hospital. You're going in. So we go in, and it's funny. This is where it, it starts to turn. The admitting nurse immediately says, oh, she's writing my name and information down. She says, you ever had a kidney stone? I said, no, no. I, I've had it in the past. I've felt a couple of times I may have had a kidney stone, but they passed. I said, no, but this isn't, that isn't what this is. And she said, oh, okay, all right. So they weren't busy that morning, thank, thank God for that. And they immediately got me into a room, and they sent me down for a CT scan. So comes back, the doctor comes in, and, and I'm sorry that I'm drawing this out because I was trying to get all that in the facts, and I'm not real good at telling stories. So I am in this room and the pain is, I told my wife, I said, well, I, I really don't need to be here. The pain is gone now. So <clears throat> the doctor comes in, he says, hey, you, uh, you have two kidney stones. They have left your kidneys and they are traveling through your, uh, the ureter, I guess it is, that travel, the, the tube that travels down to your bladder. Um, and I said, um, well, one was in my kidney still, and the other was making its travel. And he said, that's the pain. It is, uh, I think he said it was like four millimeters, very small. But um, basically, it's like a, a little ball of glass with 50 million shards of glass cutting your ureter as it travels down. He, he explained it to me as, as that. So... I wasn't having a heart attack, um, nothing else. So he sent me to, he, he, they gave me some pain medicine and something to open up, um, you know, I, I don't know the technicality, something to help me inside. So anyway, um, he gave me this pain medicine and he said, okay, you have an appointment with a urologist, you need to see a urologist. So I meet with the urologist the next couple of days or a few days or weekly I don't remember now it's it's kind of a blur but I met with them and it was a female urologist a very nice lady and she said looking over your CT scan you your your uh, one of your kidney stones is stuck in your ureter it's not passing it's not traveling it's stuck but it may be stuck in an area there's two or three locations that still allows urine and everything to pass by from your bladder or from your kidneys. And yours is in that position now, but as it moves and the jagged glass cuts and its way into your bladder, you will feel it and you will, you know, and some, some pass and some don't. And she explained that four millimeters is about the maximum that could pass for, for me. So she gave me basically a couple of months. I remember it was July 21st and, and when it's happened, and this might have been late July. She said, I'll give you till September. I think she said like September 5th. And if it doesn't pass, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up and get the kidney stone. And gentlemen, for any of you that's ever heard this before, when she said, I'm going to go up and get the kidney stone, there's only one way in to get that. And that's scary. 
so I'm not going to go into detail. You can, you can imagine what she was going to have to do. So <laughs> I was taking my medicine. Um, I was kind of scared, didn't know what to do, continued to pray um, and ask the Lord for guidance. I didn't know. Um, but they also scheduled me for an appointment with my family doctor. I didn't know why. So anyway, I meet with my family doctor, and I get told by him, just a wonderful, wonderful guy, that I have, besides besides all of this issue, and someone maybe going up and getting a kidney stone, uh, I had a fatty liver and an enlarged spleen. So I didn't know how to take that. I didn't know what to do with that. Um, I continued to pray and continued to ask the Lord, what, what do, I don't know what to do. I, you know, now your health turns into, you're in, you're in deep trouble, deep, deep trouble. So, and, and let me, let me tell you, I am about six foot two at the time. I weighed about 250 pounds, um, had never had any kind of issues like this that I knew of in my life, even though I, I never ate well. I never really took care of myself. When I was younger, I exercised a lot. But as I got older, my exercise didn't happen anymore. So, I tell you that, I tell you this. Um, he did tell me, he said the, the CT scan showed, and, and it's the gold standard, as he called it. And that'll show all of your organs, that'll show you everything. And, and, and he didn't really know which way to turn. So he said, you know, I'm gonna recommend you meet um, with a hematologist and maybe you have some blood issues. Maybe he didn't know. He wasn't sure. So now my fear level went from a kidney stone to I'm dying or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong. So I, we schedule this uh, meeting with a, a it was a hematologist slash oncologist, which if that doesn't scare you, I don't, I, I don't know what does. But unfortunately, as busy as they are, they had to mail me a packet within 30 days. And then I had to fill out these 12 pages of forms and then mail it back. And then they had to schedule it way out. So we're, we were in the middle of selling our house and we had, we had purchased a condo and we were downsizing, um, so, move ahead, move ahead, we're, we're struggling ahead. So, we're getting closer. I've scheduled my urology appointment for September 5th, I think it was, or September 8th, something like that. I've scheduled my, the bad appointment. And we close on our old house. We close on our new house the next day. So, we close on September 1st on our new house our new condo, and we move. Our, our good friends came from Indianapolis, um, great friends, and helped us move into our new condo. So it has relevance. Sorry, bear with me. So we, we move into the condo, and there's a lot of heavy moving, a lot of heavy moving couches, um, love seats, elect, you know, some of them very heavy, bedding, couches, chairs, you name it, we, we moved in. So that evening, we went to a restaurant for supper. And while I was in the restaurant having supper, I got a, an excruciating back pain. And it, I felt flush, and I felt like a lot of back pain. And so it went away. It was like, it was there for just a short time, and then it went away. So... I, I was kind of like, I don't know, I had no idea what that was. I'd been having pains off and on anyway because of the kidney stone on my right side. So, uh, and again, I apologize for going on, but I get home um, that evening. I am using the toilet, and I hear what sounds like a piece of concrete hitting the porcelain bowl inside. And I have a screen. I wasn't screening my urine, which I had been for a month 
for six weeks, but it, you know, eventually it gets boring when you're trying to scream your urine to catch this kidney stone. But anyway, my, my good friends from Indianapolis, she is a nurse, and I said, I don't know, that sounded like a piece of concrete, and she got a smile on her face and said, I, I think you passed your kidney stone. Um, so with my screen, I was able to fish out what looked like a little bitty, the smallest thing in the world, but anyway, it was a kidney stone. I didn't, I, I didn't send it in to have it tested. Um, I immediately the next day tried to can make sure I canceled my test from the um, urologist because she didn't need to go up and get anything. Now, I still had another kidney stone in my kidney, which was not causing any pain. And well, this is where, this is where YouTube comes in. I... I had began researching things like kidney stones and what causes kidney stones and how do you get rid of kidney stones. And along this way, I came, I came along Dr. Berg, Eric Berg, who does a ton of, if you, on YouTube, he's got millions and millions and millions of followers. He is, uh, kind of a, <laughs> any kind of video you need to know about, he has it. You'll, you'll find it there. So, I had been praying all along about, you know, Lord, please, whatever, just, just help me. I, I need all the help I can get. Um, but I didn't have enough faith that he would take care of me. And, and that's where this comes in. He, I struggle with faith, as most of us do. So, I, uh, Pat, the kidney stone passes, and I get this meeting with this hematologist slash oncologist who scheduled it like three months out. It was like the week before Thanksgiving before I could even get into her a couple months out. So, but previous to that, my doctor had told me, my family doctor had said, listen, you know, fatty livers are caused over decades, a lot of times from too much sugar, too much starches, you know, we don't eat well. Um, a lot of overweight people have a fatty liver. You don't know it. There's no, there's no signs or symptoms of a fatty liver. You don't know it until it's you're down here. So, Dr. Berg, I had video. He had videos on those. In, uh, I started. I started doing what he had said. Um, you know, my doctor told me to cut back on the starches and the sugars and the carbs. Those right there are, are not, not great. You know, I'm not an Olympic runner. I'm not a cross country runner. I don't need, I don't need, you know, 25,000 carbs a day. Um, I was a huge Pepsi drinker, um, which, you know, it's got whatever, 16 teaspoons of sugar in every can. Um, you know, pasta, I love pasta, I love breads, everything with carbs piled on top of it. Um, you name it, all the bad foods I loved. Still do, to this day. So, I, uh, and I apologize if I'm jumping around a little bit, but I had started, from listening to Dr. Berg, I had started um, cutting back on my carbs, and I had cut way back on my sugars, and my starches because my family doctor had mentioned that and then Dr. Berg confirmed that that your body will will run on sugars um, or if you cut back too far your body will run on ketones uh, and your body will go into ketosis if you don't if you have less than 50 carbs a day well you know I'm a type A personality I went from I'm, I'm having too many carbs too many sugars too many starches to I cut them all out and I probably I, I did I, I cut everything out and I started eating a salad every day a large one of my meals was a large salad and I had walnuts inside I mean it, it was if you went to pay for it you would probably pay $12 for the salad you know I mean we're talking um, all the good stuff that I like vegetables um, salad, um, greens, you know, the, the main salad, stuff like that. So and then I top it with, uh, a few pecans and walnuts. Walnuts are phenomenal for you. 
Um, but another thing Dr. Berg mentioned was lemon water will help dissolve kidney stones because I still had the fear in the back of my mind that, well, I still got another kidney stone. And what happens when it starts tearing its way down my ureter to my bladder? So I started making a gallon every day. I would cut up a couple of lemons, squeeze them into a gallon of water, and I would drink almost, probably I would say a half gallon a day. I would drink that half gallon throughout the day. I joined a gym. I was trying to exercise. Um, you know, when when death hits you in, in that point and you think, boy, I don't know, you know. And I still haven't had a meeting with the oncologist and uh, hematologist lady. But I started, basically what happened was, I started doing all of these healthy habits right away, still not knowing what, what's going to happen when I meet with this person and a funny thing happened I started to get healthy I started to lose weight and as you lose 10 pounds your blood pressure starts to drop I was pre-hypertensive blood pressure have been for years um, then you lose another 10 pounds and your blood pressure drops a little bit more you're getting up, you're going to the gym, you're exercising, you're doing everything that we know we need to do. And at night, I'm still praying to the Lord that I'm going to meet an oncologist. Is she going to give me the news, the worst news in the world that everybody fears? But he kept pushing me, just do everything that you're told. You, you've got to have faith. Um, so anyway, this goes on for six, eight weeks until I can get in to see this oncologist. And by then, my weight was down to 210 pounds and I was feeling better. Uh, I didn't have the aches and the pains and everything else that goes along with being overweight. So I get in to see the oncologist and again, of course, had prayers, you know, the, the fears. I meet with her and she was f phenomenal. She came in, um, she had reviewed my entire file, everything, and she basically went out on a limb and said, you're fine. I checked even, uh, what did she say? Not bone marrow, but she checked everything that she needed to check as an oncologist slash hematologist. Nothing wrong with my blood, nothing wrong, I don't have cancer. Um, and the enlarged spleen, she said, what, what some people don't understand is you don't have an enlarged spleen. You're a large man. You are six foot two, 250 pounds. That is well within the range of the size of a spleen. So I sat there and, you know, I thank the Lord every day for everything I have. And I'm so blessed with children, grandchildren, my spouse, uh, everything that I have and everything that's happened to me. But when you get told, you're fine. You're, you're, you're perfectly healthy. You don't ever need to come back and see me ever again. You are fine. And she said, don't, don't, you don't have to lose any more weight. You're down to 210 pounds. You're fine. Well, I walked out of the office that day and tears just streamed down my face. Because, you know, when you go in, you're afraid of the worst news of your life. And you come out with the best news of your life. You, you, uh, you know, I was so, so blessed. So, still, knowing me, a type A personality, I thought, well, I'm doing everything that my doctor told me to do. I cut out sugars, I cut out starches, uh, carbs, and this continued... And so I was not, my doctor had told me to cut back on all of those. Well, I had heard that they're, they're horrible, they're terrible, they're bad. You know, Dr. Berg explains basically, you know, in that stature. Um, and so I kept on doing what I was doing. Um, I would have um, 
chicken for lunch or a steak for lunch and a nice big salad for supper or vice versa. I, I also added intermittent fasting into this situation. So I moved into only eating two meals a day. Now, I felt great. I wouldn't eat breakfast. I never felt hungry in the mornings, mid-morning, maybe 11 to 12, about probably close to noon. I would be hungry and I would either have a large you know, chicken or something meat of some type. Um, unless, and, and we were flexible. If my wife was busy and we were gone and I was doing something, uh, we would eat. I would have a steak or I would have a chicken or I would have fish, those kind of things. And then I would have my salad for supper. And it's a large salad. Or if we were home and I was available, I would make a salad for lunch and break my fast with my salad and then move on and have for dinner I would, and try not to have snacks. So... This continued on for probably, well, at least two or three months. So a few months later, let's I, I fast forward maybe February, I get on the scales and I'm like at 189 pounds. I've never felt better. Um, I'm sleeping good. It's it's a solid sleep. I mean, I still I still drink my coffee as I'm doing here black straight black coffee I don't have anything in it so but this whole time I'm being told by people well oh, you look terrible you look gaunt you look uh, I don't know you, you don't and, and I'm told this over and over and over and over and I'm like but I feel great uh, you don't look good you don't look good you don't look good at all so at that point in time you know, you, you listen to what they say, and I thought, well, obviously, I mean, I'm not eating carbs, or very many, very, very few, and my body is running on ketones, which I, I still think to this day is really good. I, I've got all the tools to, to control that, um, but I introduced back into my system in small amounts, um, sugars, and carbs and every now and then I would have with an omelet if I had an omelet which is great for you it has no carbs you know it, it's really good I would introduce maybe some hash browns and I never noticed anything at first uh, over time well the 189 pounds went back to like 195 um, and then we had been going to the gym for about oh, I'd say about eight months steady um, you know things creep up things happen and I reverted to um, that was during COVID and I reverted to getting rid of my gym membership um, and it kind of made a complete switch basically I stopped going to the gym um, it was summertime so I could go outside you know and exercise. I still walked. I tried to walk 30 minutes a day exercise. But slowly, you know, I I love bread. I love pastas. All the good stuff that we all we all really love. And so, you know, you go out to a restaurant and you're like, oh boy. Ooh, they got mashed potatoes and gravy or, you know, they got bread. You know, you go to Texas Roadhouse. They want to give you rolls. And so I uh, would start introducing that. <clears throat> so I have, <laughs> let's just say I went off the rails. I'm still very healthy, but I have put weight back on. Um, I unfortunately started drinking soda again, and I made that slip that a lot of us have done. Um, but I have the tools to correct all that. I still have a salad every day. I'm trying to cut back on the sugars again. The sugars are terrible, and um, starches. And I, you know, I have trouble with carbs. I love everything with the with the carbs in it. I love. So <clears throat> I have to do better. I have to get back. Um, but the meaning of this whole video, and I'm sorry that it, it took a half hour to get through this. Um, faith 
is something I have struggled with for a long, long time. I, I am a Christian. I love God. I, I know God will take care of me. And he has a plan. But I'm also a type A personality. And I want to help him along the way and control everything and take care of it. So you, you can't do that. You, you have to know and let yourself go to some point and say, Lord, you've, you've got this. I can't do this anymore. And when you do that, the joy and the inner peace that you will have is fantastic. So on my journey... I'm still struggling with that. You know, once a type A personality and a, um, you want to help and you want to control and you want to fix. And if there's an issue, I, uh, okay, what's the answer? I'll go fix it. Go from that to the Lord saying, I got this. Relax. It, everything will be fine. It's very difficult. It's a, it's a very difficult thing to do. So I just want you to know Whatever health issues you have, continue to pray. Continue to believe the Lord has you in the palm of his hand. It's okay. The blessings are many. Um, you know, a lot of times on my videos, and, and this is, you know, this is a completely different video than my electric vehicles and my Uber or DoorDash or any kind of videos I've been doing. Um but I felt this morning, I woke up in the middle of the night, and I just felt like the Lord was telling me, you need to do this video. This is what you need to do. I put this on your heart for a reason. And so now I follow. When God tells me to do something, I do it. So um, I'll, I'll finish up, let you guys go back to sleep, or, or I'll finish my coffee. Um, but just remember, whatever health issues you have, God will put the right people in the right place at the right time for you. So, um, thank you guys so much. Uh, may the Lord bless you, and uh, I, I appreciate all that he's done for me. And uh, thank you for listening. Okay, Be safe, everyone.